Sure. 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 Are you there? Oh. Okay. Right, good evening, and welcome to Neighborhood Board 14. And just a couple of administrative announcements. Please close your cell phones, and if you want to be recognized, please raise your hand, especially those on the WebEx. Okay. Um. <clears throat> First of all, do we have a roll call and we have a quorum? Yeah, uh, we have everybody here. I could do a roll call if you'd like. Ega? Present. Carol Kaapu? Present. Zoido Magoye? Present. Brandon Mitsuda? Present. Chance now Ota. Present. Henry Peng. Yo. Cora Yamamoto. Present. Dale White. Present. Donald Nita. Present. Darren Cantrell. Present. Present. And Chair Wesley Fong. Present. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, if are there any objections? We have a special uh, Ashley presentation this evening, and I don't want them to have to wait through all of our business before uh, we make that presentation. It is under item number 10 a. It's a recognition of Miss Jade. Bon. Bon. So much for my Vietnamese. <laughs> but, uh. Are there any objections of taking this matter out of order and putting it uh, right after the government agencies? So moved. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll take it as a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay. I'm just going to have a show of hands. All in favor of taking it out of order, raise your right hand. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. Okay. First order of business on a little fire department. Oh, they're oh, here in person. Hi, um, I'm firefighter Johnny Mata, the only fire department um, out of uh, Kuatini Fire Station. Uh, so this month's stats for us is uh, for structure fires. We have we had one structure fire and one nuisance fire and six activated alarms with no fires. For emergencies, we had 130 medicals. One motor vehicle collision with a pedestrian and one motor vehicle crash with a collision. Also, um, one hazardous materials incident. Um, so, this month's fire safety tips and announcements are uh, wildland fire awareness, prevention, and preparedness. Wildland fires um, significantly threaten Hawaii's landscapes, wildlife, and communities. Lighten the load, reduce, reduce fuels, and the Possibility of ignition on your landscape by maintaining your yard and cleaning your gutters. Clear, cool, and contained. Clear vegetation 10 feet around campfires and barbecues. Keep a shovel and water nearby and put them out cold before walking away. Um, watch a spark. Sure mach machinery such as chainsaws, weed trimmers, recreational vehicles with operating spark arresters are maintained regularly. Uh, learn more of these online resources at HFD. Fire.holu.gov. Department of Emergency Management at holu.gov slash DEM and Hawaii Wildfire Management Organization HWMO.org slash lookout. Any questions? Any questions from the board? How about any questions from the audience? Public? Not? Thank you. And thanks for coming in person. Oh, there is a, oh, there is a, yes, Carl, I'm sorry. Um, just a, a comment. Uh, I live five houses away from Natsunoya, and oh. as of about two as of about two weeks ago, um, they are in business. So and they've they've renovated, painted, and everything. So uh, we and we still we still want to know what happened. <laughs> oh, yeah. So as of right now, yeah. So the, so the cost of the fire is still undetermined. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes.
fire department. This is fire department. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. I'm a police department. Hi. Um, this is Lieutenant Keone Hong with um, the Honolulu Police Department representing District 5 Kalihi. Regarding the stats for April, burglaries, there were two, motor vehicle thefts, there were six, thefts 14, car break ins 11. Robberies, there was one. Aggravated assaults, zero. Sexual assault, zero. Simple assaults, four. And the total cost for service was 1,289. Regarding that robbery, kind of a different one, but it occurred on uh, April 3rd at about 11.50 a.m. Uh, near 7-Eleven Nuuanu. 18-year-old male victim was approached by a male suspect who threatened force for his property. The male victim handed over his wallet, phone, and eventually um, it, the suspect took out some money from the ATM. After he took the money, it was reported he returned the phone and wallet. The victim didn't report it at the scene, but three hours later went to the Waikiki substation and reported the incident, but does not want to prosecute. Uh, no arrest made at this time. But otherwise, I don't have anything else. If there are any questions, I can answer them at this time. Any questions from the first, the board? Any questions from the board? Yes, Ron. Yes, uh, once I saw what the e bike was going up the hill, was going the wrong way, I was going down as the person was going up. Is that uh, illegal? Uh, which is that? Um, what street is this? Sorry. What street was it? Yeah. What's the name of the street? Yeah, because uh, he uh, he went up the hill towards uh, St. Francis. Yeah, I was going down the hill. St. Francis and back of St. Francis. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he bike. Yeah. Yeah, if they're not in their appropriate lane and they're in your lane of travel, yeah, that is a traffic violation. So if you do see some hazardous driver. Um, just be sure to report it in the future. Call 911, give a description. Hopefully, you can get the license plate, and then an officer can check the area and maybe try to uh, initiate a traffic stop on that vehicle. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other from the board? Yes. Run. Okay. I believe someone from the public. Yes. Ms. Lim, you to come up and uh, ask your question? Hi, I'm Margaret Lim. I live in Akamo Place. About two weeks ago, there were two police officers who stopped by my house looking for a man in a burglary uh, case. I want to know if uh, the man was caught or not. Um, do you know the date? I can try to look it up. I have my computer, but... Sorry, no. It's about two weeks ago. Okay. What is the cross street, the nearest cross street? The nearest cross street would be Pali, Pali Highway and Akamu Place. And try to check if there's anything, but yeah, I would either need like the date or the exact address to get a definite answer or report number. But um, um, no, I don't have that. It was it was pretty quick. They passed by, and next I know they went to the yard of the Nuuanu Congressional Church. Let me check real fast. Just there's only two birds, so I can look up both of them real quick if you want me to. Is that your jurisdiction? Because our common place is across the poly. It's not within oh. our neighborhood board fourteen. Yeah, it might not be on my stats unless we have the exact address. I could still look it up. But maybe you can ask the neighborhood board uh, 12, I believe. 12. That's on the other side of the poly. I Thank see. you. Any okay. other questions from the public? 
Okay, if not, BWS. Thank you. Hi, good evening. I'm online. It's Iris Oda. My stats from April, we had two main breaks. April 4th, near 2134 Appeal Lane. And on April 10th, near 65, oh, sorry, 654 Walea Place. And just a general announcement. To learn the latest about the border water supplies, operational actions in response to the Red Hill crisis, uh, go to our boardofwatersupply.com slash protect Oahu water. That's all one word, protect Oahu water. And you can see uh, weekly pumpage charts, recent drinking water and monitoring well test results. We have our border water news and updates on Red Hill, uh, water conservation tips and rebates, and about Oahu's water history. So yeah, so go to borderwatersupply.com slash protect Oahu water, and then you can see about the Red Hill water, uh, the Red Hill crisis from the border water stems. And that's all I have for my announcements. Thank yeah, you. Iris, I have one question. <clears throat> there sure. was a 50, the proposal for a 50% raise in my, my water bill. It, it has, is that in effect now? Don't know about a 50% raise today. You mean like just all of a sudden? We did yeah. have our rate study and a rate, um, our rates increased over the past few years. I don't know the exact number for residential right now. I could have, I'd have to look that up. Yeah, can see. you can let us know? I know, I know we got a report from one of your representatives, Katie. I think it says yeah. it's going to probably go 50%. Okay, yeah. And I asked her, do I have to drill my own well? Of course not. We'll make sure to get water to you, <laughs> just uh, for you. <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll I'll go look into that though. There is some increase over time, and over the six year period, there is oh, a certain right. percentage increase. So yeah, I'll let you know tomorrow next month. Carol said it may be a five year increase. Yes, I, it's I don't over just five let years. us know. I, mean, I was yes. curious. That, okay. I don't. Uh, that means I gotta you know take less less showers. That's all. <laughs> We always want you to conserve, but <laughs> our water rates are still. That, that's very, what my very, wife very says. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? From the public? If not, Iris, thank you very much. We'll see you, uh, we'll see next, you next, next meeting. month. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. We've already uh, voted to take out of order uh, item number 10, which is a recognition of Ms. Uh, Jade Pham. Uh, Hi, um, Ori Yamamoto. I move that we adopt, approve the resolution recognizing and honor, honoring Jade Pham, which I will read. Okay. Wait, is there a second? Is there a second? Seconded by Chan. Okay. Uh, any discussion? If not, quick roll call vote. Oh, no, no, I'm going to read it. Uh, no, no, let's take the vote then. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're going to read the resolution. <laughs> Not everybody may. Yeah, okay. Got it. <laughs> Thank Don't you. Read, Thank you. Read the resolution. Sure. Whereas Jade Palm, Temporary Assistant Vice Principal and Student Services Coordinator, Kawananakoa Middle School, was awarded the National Milk and Educate Educator Award on April 8, 2024. And whereas this highest accolade for educators established by the Milken Family Foundation in 1987, includes a $25,000 unrestricted cash prize and inclusion in a national network of awardees and aims to empower these teachers, administrators, and specialists to create, elevate, and activate the K-12 profession and inspire young, capable people to pursue teaching as a career and Whereas Jade Pham was recognized for her dedication to advancing student growth, mentoring teachers, and forging strong relationships with parents and families. And whereas Ms. Pham started teaching special education and general education at her alma mater, Kaimuki High School, and arrived at Kaunanakoa Middle School in 2021 teaching special education and social studies before stepping into her coordinator position in 2022 
to 23, and whereas she widens opportunities for students through after school activities, including advising and a, a minority, oh, oh, sorry, a mainly East, mainly female eSport program and a Micronesian club focusing on relationship building and cultural learning. And whereas in the short time Jade Palm has been at Kawananakoa, the proportion of special education students moving into general education classrooms has increased significantly, in part due to, it, to her advocacy. And whereas Ms. Pham came to Hawaii as a toddler with her parents, an older sister from Vietnam, and attended public schools while living in public housing, then attended college in Oregon and the University of Hawaii Master's in Education program. And whereas she is passionate about making a lasting difference in at-risk children's lives and giving back to the communities and the profession that widen her own horizons. And now, therefore, be it resolved that neighborhood board number 14 heartily congratulates Jade Pham, exceptional young educator, for what she has achieved and for the promise of what she will accomplish and expresses our deep mahalo for strengthening our neighborhood keiki and their families. And be it ordered that copies of this resolution be transmitted to the governor of the state of Hawaii, the lieutenant governor of the state of Hawaii, Hawaii State Senators Rhodes and Kim, Hawaii State Representative Take Nuuchi, Mayor Blangiardi, City Council Member Dos Santos Tam. Thank you. Any discussion, first of all? Okay, now for the vote, roll call. Ronald Higa. Okay. Yes. Carol Kaapu. Yes. Zoidel Magoye. Yes. Brandon Mitsuda. Aye. Chance Naota. Aye. Henry Peng. Cora Yamamoto. Aye. Dale White. Aye. Donald Nita. Aye. Darren Kentrell. Aye. Henry Peng. And Chair Wesley Fong. Aye. Seeing no objections, the motion is carried. Now, before I ask our honoree to come up and take a picture with our board first, and then we're going to have a picture with all of the uh, Kuana Nakua graduates here and uh, her fiance. Uh, I want to just have a little preface, if I may. You know, first of all, I want to thank uh, Kaur Yamamoto for bringing to our attention this most coveted award and to recognize our honoree. And it's, it's indeed an honor to have you as one of our educators in our district more so Neighborhood Board 14, to receive this most coveted award. You know, regardless to me, regardless of what school you attended, whether it's a private school or a public school, or regardless of what social economic status you are, what's most important to be successful in a career is education. And as an educator, who teaches law at the university, I know how important education is, but I think it starts in grades K through 12, and that is quite an accomplishment. You know, I, I looked at this, up this, this award because I didn't know anything about the award, but you know, when I look at this award, I say to myself, you know, film has its Oscars. And music has its Grammys. And science has its Nobel. And sports has its gold medals. But what does education have? What education has is the Millican Educator Award that recognizes an outstanding educator, grades K through 12, throughout the nation, once a year, only up to 40 in the nation. I'm very impressed. We are very impressed. And we are very proud to have you as one of our educators in our district, neighborhood 14, to have received this very coveted award. 
and it makes us proud. I'm sure it makes your friends proud and your family proud. So on behalf of the Neighborhood Board 14, I'd like to uh, present you after this, we're gonna get up and take a picture with this resolution honoring you as the Millican Educator Awardee for the year. You make us very proud and congratulations. <laughs> Just to make it official, Joints, okay. Uh, I went up the hill. <laughs> Would you like to say I always say that to my students. Would you like to say a few words? This is to the audience of all of neighborhood board. But I guess I, I do this all the time at work too, <laughs> but it's always more, you know, nerve wracking in front of other adults. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for um, providing me with this honor. Um, this is actually my first time attending a neighborhood board meeting. <laughs> uh, so it was quite interesting, but um, I really am so happy to be working at Kwan and Nikola and um, serving the students who are from this community. You know, a lot of students from uh, my my end up at Kwananakoa, so it's really awesome to see them grow from throughout middle school because it's a really hard time for kids, as you might know. Um, but I'm very fortunate to be in this role where I get to do what I love. So thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, guys.
Okay, back to the agenda. Uh, we have vacancies, um, subdistrict four and five. Anybody four and five is in? Yay, all right, come on up. Yes. What's that? What's that game show? Come on up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, which dis sub district would you be in? I believe um, I'm in sub district five. Five. In okay. Bikini Street. Okay. First question is, why do you want to join our illustrious group? <laughs> you know, moving from IL into the Lee area in 2018. Unfortunately, I've seen a lot of things that are not fun to the community. I myself, my family was a victim of car theft on Bikini. We found the car three days later up in Kalihi Valley. Uh, I see, because I live on Bikini, my living room window faces the one on the floor. So late at night, I'm hearing all the people who's in the park. I don't care about that. What I don't like is in the morning, you see all the trash. So there's no community respect. The crime rate, talk to a lot of the people. I live in a building, an apartment that's majority elder. Um, I actually kind of like it because you don't get a lot of drama. Um, but you do get a lot of complaints and concerns. And my background is law, law enforcement. So immediately they're like, what can you do? I can't do anything. You know, I'm just a citizen. So it's majority to help the community. Um, in clear transparency, I am running for office, but that's not the reason why I joined. I had a long talk with a couple of people. And um, at my age, and I'm a lot younger than probably most of you, except Chance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you kind of take a different look outlook in your community and you want it safer for everybody. So that's the main, that's the main reason is to try and help. I'm a voice anyway. I go and I testify and I speak on behalf of the people. So if I can't do it for my own neighborhood, then what am I doing out there anyway? So that's why I'm doing it. Well, first of all, very important. What is your name? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, in Christian, W A L L Y N. Just before you folks ask, yes, I am Chinese, but it's not Chinese. It's W A L for my dad Walter and L Y N for my mom Jacqueline. So they put that together, and my last name is Christian. Now, from the board, any questions, first of all, and after that, I'll entertain a motion that we approve having. Walin, Walin as a, a member of our neighborhood board, any questions. Go for it. I'm ready. Now, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Move by Dale. Second. Second by chance. Any discussion? All in favor of having Wayland Christian. Wayland, yes. Wayland, and I'm Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> As a member of Neighborhood Board 14 from Sub District 5, uh, roll call. If you don't mind, could I just verify residency and then we can come back? Okay, to I have my ID. You want that? Yeah, can you come up and then we'll do that and then I'll, we'll take I'll, roll call and then. Okay. We'll I'll tell you what, if you don't have any objections, why don't you go over there and, uh, you know, let them check you out, as they say. <laughs> and then we'll come on back and have an official vote. Is that okay? Any objections? So let's move on from there. Uh, resident concerns. Any resident concerns? Oh, no, 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 no. You go over there first. <laughs> right. Um, yes. Go ahead. Um, I'm Margaret Lim again. Um, I was reached out by a homeowner who lives in 2647 Lidiha Street. And his name is Wyatt Hayashida. And he's been complaining about a storm drain that's not working proper, properly. And it has been affecting him for the last five years. 
And according to him, he's reached out to various, um, you know, offices and no help was uh, available to, to him. And so whenever it rains heavily, it floods his front lawn, lawn but the front lawn is not um, his property. It belongs to the city and county. So he would like to get help. And his um, concern and some photos he provided to me was forwarded to Chair Fong. So whoever can help, maybe can reach out to Chair Fong. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, our city representative's right there. He's gonna do the one, be the one to take care of this uh, problem. I, what I'm doing is I'm giving you a, a slip here. It's called a uh, this resident concerns. But if you can fill it out and give it to our Ed, and he'll take care of that. Thank you very much. Any questions on the board? From the public? Okay. Anybody else have any concerns? Okay. If not, back to. <laughs> She checks out. District five, sub district five, right? She's a legitimate. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we were a roll call, right? Okay. So this is um, for Wallen Christensen to fill a sub district five vacancy. And if you could please say the name of who you wish to vote for, Ronald Higa. Uh, yes. Wallen Christians. Christian. Christian. Sorry. Carol Kaapu. Wallen Christian. Zoido Maguire. Wallen Christian. Brandon Mitsuda. Wallen Christian. Chance Naoota. Wallen Christian. Henry Peng. Hora Yamamoto. Wallen Christian. Dale White. Wallen Christian. Donald Nita. Wallen Christian. Darren Kentrell. All in Christian. And Chair Wesley Fong. All in Christian. Congratulations, yeah. Wallen. Yeah, all right. Congratulations. I beat myself up. <laughs> um, Thank you very much. No, uh, let's see. Spencer, can she join us today? Or she has to be sworn in first. She has, you just swore in? Oh, wait. <laughs> Raise my right hand. So you want me to start from to the executive secretary? Yep. From the top of the line? Okay. To the executive secretary of the neighborhood commission office. Oh, it says all the facts. I solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully support the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America. Constitution and laws of the state of Hawaii, the charter and laws of the city and county of Honolulu and the provisions of the neighborhood plan and will consist conscientiously and impartially discharge my duties to the best of my ability as a member of the neighborhood board to which I have been elected. Hey, that's it. That's Congratulations. It. Right. And yes, and we would like to invite you to join the rostrum by sitting away. We, got, we have a space set for you. You can grab your stuff and come up. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Uh, umpa. Um, umpo. Uh, <laughs> either Coro or, or Dar Darren. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, right. Anyway, it's too early. <laughs> All right. There, well, yeah, I know, I know, I know. All right, hold on, hold on. Well, I'll tell you what. Look, oh yeah, Cora, Cor Cor or Darren, give the report. We don't have to wait sure. for that. Uh, the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee to the Oahu Metropolitan Planning Organization, which is for transportation, met in its monthly meeting the 1st of May and um, conducted a review of work plan and there was a presentation by ICF, it's a contracted organization um, of a study, a progress of a study that um, has been commissioned by AMPO about decarbonizing Honolulu transportation sector. 
And this is over a 30 year period. Um, they will be putting out a recommendation for an action plan there, um, looking at trying to get all um, city and county vehicles to be electric by 2035. It's one of the things. And there's some other there's some other specifics that will be recommended. Any questions from the board? Yes, go ahead, Jens. What did they say when that plan was going to be presented? I suppose the timeline. I, I don't think they gave us the timeline, but it you know should be fairly soon. And, and yeah, you know, I'll, I'll report on that okay. when it Thank comes you. out. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions, director? Henry, you said all vehicles was going to be electric or oh, for, for city and county. Yeah. yeah. What about the heavy duty or? One ton and above vehicles. Wasn't the commercial vehicles. Was, wasn't specified. This was just sort of a broad. You know, the, the details will be in the, the final study, but there are other other um, recommendations that will be included. Probably, um, let's see. Four bus routes will be um, rapid lanes, um, rapid sort of rapid transit lanes. There'll, there might be a recommendation for regional parking pricing. They're looking specifically at Waikiki. Okay. You know, change the parking um, pricing. Um, and also um, prioritizing sites for electrical vehicle infrastructure, you know, charging stations. Okay. Any other questions? That is explicitly electric vehicles or just green vehicles? Specifically electric. Yeah, for the for the But they should be more generic because hydrogen is coming out as a technology that Right. Um, um when it when it starts, you know, the next progress report, I'll take a look at that. Let you know. Yep. I have a question. Hydrogen? Yep. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions? If not, uh, I'm going to go back to resident concerns with our, our newest <laughs> member. Yes. First off, thank you for welcoming me. Um, so I live in an apartment building on Kokini Street, and just the other day, there were a couple items taken from inside a secured garage. So they were asking me, and I said, well, technically, you guys have to take care of it because it's an association. So you guys may have to look into security. But the problem is, I think I, I mentioned this at the last meeting, with the homeless being under the Liliokalani stream on Kuakini Street. So we're thinking it's that. And I don't know if the city can do something about that because when I drove out the other day, two days in a row, there was a homeless gentleman sleeping right on the sidewalk. And it was during school hours, so the kids didn't want to walk there. So it's kind of a combo, you know, the theft, the blocking the sidewalk, and the homelessness. So that's just my concern right now on Kuakini Street. I started kind of looking at the street this past week. That's all. Any questions? Uh, I'm going to give you that uh, neighborhood concern. You can fill it out later and give it to you over there. Okay. Any other? Anybody else for the uh, resident concerns? Okay, let's move along. Uh, did we have any reports of members attending any other meetings that may have significance to us? Okay, all right. Now we're to uh, elected officials, uh, our city representative. Hello and good evening, Edward Los Banos, Deputy Director, Department of Community Services. Um, Congratulations, uh, Wallen, on your appointment. Um, first up, a few announcements from the mayor's newsletter, a few highlights actually. Um, mayor's newsletter is no longer on wanawaku.org. It's at honolulu.gov slash mayor slash newsletter. Um, Department of Planning and Permitting, there were a number of big changes announced earlier this year. So we made progress on the first one, and that's adopting a new um, system called Clarity, which is the newest, which is a, something that you would expect from a, in the year 2025 for a government agency in terms of, uh, and this is going to be the brain for our permit system, but then there's going to be a couple other, um, other innovations coming in and new systems that are, that work with Clarity, 
and worked well with the Cardi uh, that we'll be rolling out the brute transparency. It also introduced some artificial intelligence to, make sure, to help folks that might not be that in, um, well versed in planning uh, submit complete permit packages, do the initial review, and free up some man hours so EDP can do what they do best then. Uh, spend the man hours where more critical analysis is needed. Um, also, details of the city's annual sustainability report was issued was released on Earth Day. Um, you know, so a big operation like the city, every little change we can make quite a bit. So we did see a 12% reduction in water, 6% decline in electricity, um, and we planted 3,679 tree among other highlights in there. Um, Next one I have is a project to remove Haiku stairs. It officially got underway on April 10th, and ever since then it's kind of been on the news for trespassers. Um, but you know, so you know, be smart, guys, and you know, stay out of the way. It's, it's a, it was a dangerous proposition to begin with, then uh, with the stairs in dilapidated condition. And now that we're in progress of removing the stairs, it's even more dangerous. Um, I also have uh, the final announcement. The highlight he wanted to be provided was the summer fund program. Coming up, we are looking for a number of um, folks to watch our Kiki in the summer fund program. So we are offering up to sixteen dollars an hour um, to work at summer fund. I, I worked in summer fund through up through my all my college years uh, over at Monolua. Um, really enjoyable experience. Highly recommend it. Anybody coming home from uh, from school on the mainland or anything like that have to sign up. We're, we need people. We're trying to break the record as far as number of students we can we can enroll in our program. And the only way we can do that is if we have enough people to watch them. So um, it's a great time. And like I said, I did that for about six years, all the way through grad school. I enjoyed it. A um, couple more announcements. Uh, the, there's four more town hall meetings coming up. This Thursday, I'll be in Wailua. Uh, the last four meetings are Wailua, Koko Head, and Houla Elementary. And finally, Kanoi Lani Elementary. Um, otherwise, last announcement I have from the mayors is so a lay for Memorial Day. So we are looking to our goal is to put a, a lay on each of the graves. Uh, Thirty thousand lays is what we're looking to adorn. Is what we need. And on that, we do have um, you can drop off lay over at the, any fire station. They just ask that if the fire if the fire folks aren't there, uh, you don't don't leave it behind. I'll make sure somebody's there and leave it with somebody. Otherwise, there there's a couple of places that you can donate lay that are close. Or sorry, you can participate in sewing lay. One, nothing in this district, but we do have one next door at Booth District Park or Kalakawa District Park down the road. Um, sewing times on Friday, May 24th is going to be between 9 and 1 p.m. at both locations. Uh, all lay has to be between 20 to 22 inches before tying. Uh, floral lays are also floral sprays, sorry, floral sprays such as tea leaf and thurian bouquets are also welcome. And we can put those on the grave sites as well. Um, flower lays or tea leaf lays, which is what we're looking for. And, if you've ever been to punch pool during um during it, it's the tea leaf lays that kind of blend in with the grass in the areas. I mean the flower lays really, really do a, a lot of the top. So appreciate that. In terms of follow-ups that I had from last week, um, the Makanai fire, I believe HFD reported they didn't have any no further information was released on the incident, unfortunately. Um but you know, highlight what I mentioned last month. The fire was fire was did originate from the outside of the building. So still no information on that. I can keep you up to date if there's any more information released on that one. Um, the other one I had was a update on a damaged or missing sign at Kalihi Street between Immens Highway and North School Street in the area of Beckley Street and the H1 on-ramp. Um, let's see. So we did yeah, so that one's under the Jurisdiction of DOT. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it says that uh, was, was, the work was completed. Unfortunately, um, Wallen, I did not get receive an update on the issue that you raised as far as the homeless under the um, Wilkins Street Bridge. I'll have that for you. Um, July, if not sooner. I know you guys are on recess next month. Thank you. So, Bridge, uh, the one is still on hold. Yeah. Sorry about that. Questions? Uh, yeah, let's. Uh, how about the uh, old Long's building on the Leah Street? Is do we know what's going? To, people have been asking what what they're going to do with that building. Do you know? or Would you know? I don't have any information on that. 
It's a private landowner, and I think we've been able to get in touch with them. Is, is it the board still interested in what they're going to do with that? I don't know if you want to leave it on the you want to leave it on the agenda just for. Sort of, yeah, I took the question. Who's going to report it to us? Not the city, I guess. Who, who, who would be? Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, it's actually it's owned by a private entity, not a person, an entity. Uh, and the reason why I know that is my friend got approached by the property management, which is I believe Collier's is the sign. There's a sign there, and it's for sale. Um, and they had asked if she wanted to purchase it because they're trying to get rid of it basically because of those, the homeless sleeping under that little drive through and, and now they blocked all the windows. It is privately owned. I do know that I believe it's Collier's. Um, I drive by every day. So I saw the sign there. Okay. I'm, I'm going to take it off the agenda because the city doesn't know it. Who's, who owns it and plus they don't know what's going to happen with it. So I'll take it off the agenda. Um. In regards to items uh, 9, uh, D, and E, and even G, those are all the, you know, the monster homes. Uh, I leave it on only because of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, so they can remind us, you know, to bring it up. So has, have any of these been resolved or are they still on appeal? That's my question. I didn't get an update from DPP on either of those. I know at the last meeting, um, Deputy Director Sumada, it promised that you know he'd provide updates as they um, as progress has been on any of those addresses. I'll, I'll I'll leave it on the agenda because it does affect our uh, our neighborhood. Let's see what else have we got. Uh, item ten D. I think that's under yours too. Did we? Did you talk about that painting the crosswalk? I did not get an update on this one. This is the crosswalk between Alaneo and Lanakila. I don't know who brought this up. To over to from the, I guess the public housing to the field at that area. Whose whose item was this? Yours, Donald. Yeah. Oh, this is this is not. And it, it, and it is painted. Oh, all right. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna take that off. Eight fifty one. Got it on the agenda. Wait, anybody on the board? Do you remember who on the board brought this up? No, you? That address and in front of uh, Lana I think it was the 851. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. School Street. Yeah. Yeah. That one has, I don't think that has been painted yet. Okay. Right. Can right. you check on that? I'll leave it on the agenda. All right. I think, I think that's it. Anything else to, uh, dealing with the city? Anybody? Yes. Donald. Yes, um, can we have the status of that uh, crosswalk on Judge Street that uh, Councilman Al Santo had a petition on? You're talking about the crosswalk or the sidewalk? Um, excuse me, the sidewalk. I don't have an update for you. It wasn't, um, it wasn't a project that's um, on the, it's on the plan, area plan. We do recognize it's on DTS's uh, area um, plan for sidewalk in that area. But as far as far as it, it being in the pro project queue, it's not. I don't have it in the. Uh, we got to report that it's not in the queue for a project. Okay, uh, because uh, I would like to keep that on the uh, um, business um, for the board because um, I am very interested in that cross points that sidewalk because I think you and I we had a discussion on that way before this. Yeah, I guess so. And the answer the city gave was. No, but Mr. Dallas Santos brought it up again, and he said he has a petition. Hi, this so is I'm Lisa. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. This is Lisa from uh, Councilmember Dos Santos Tam's office. I will. I'll be reporting on that. Okay. Good. Thank you. We'll wait. Okay. We'll wait. Thank you. Anybody else want any questions of our city representative? Question. Yes. Go ahead, Henry. In regards to the monster homes that we have on issue, how does the new legislation impact um, the fines and the events that's going to occur? Which legislation, Henry? The one that she. I, I think our state representative is going to testify that. Yeah. We, 
because it happened anyway. But they are right now there. The monster homes that we have in issue are being fined, but because of the legislation that comes out probably next year or whenever it gets signed, would make those units possibly legal anyway. So that's my question anyway. Because they're being fined now, should we collect our money fast? <laughs> I don't have a position on that. I think we have to run it up to the Department of Planning and Permitting and have a response for you at the next meeting. You know, I'm going to ask if the board to uh, indulge me. I'm going to bring this up, actually the same question, and it's under um, item number 10C. And I'm going to have Representative Takenuchi uh, brief us on what the status and what all alternatives are on the county level. Because if I read the legislation, the counties can do something to abrogate having to follow. I mean, I don't want my my neighbor to have three parcels on his land. Good God. I mean, you know, so you mind if we wait until we get to that? And Ed, you mind sticking around? Okay. Is that okay, Henry? Okay. Any, any objections? Then we can discuss it in, in total. All right. Any other questions for the city rep? From the... Public, thank you, Ed. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, the Santos. Hi, this Council. is Lisa, Lisa Leonardo from Councilmember to Santos Tam's office. Aloha. All right. So I'll start off with that Judd Street petition for a sidewalk. Uh, to date, we do have sixty signatures, um, which is a good example of neighbors speaking up. We didn't necessarily have a timeline, but council member would like to um, leave it open for people to sign until the end of June. And then after that, he'll be uh, trying to push forward with the city departments um, uh, to work on moving forward with that. And that's the update. Um, I, I would say keep it on the agenda and I'll continue updating um, as we go monthly. Um, and then just today, council member met with um, constituents at 15 Craigside. I know that's on New Wanu, but he wanted to say that if there are some safety issues that they have, it might spill over into the Liha area. So I'll keep updating um, anything that we work on for that. Um, in August, council member will be introducing some legislation to address speed limits around the island, especially in school zones. Um, and this will help to give Department of Transportation flexibility to reassess speed limits to reduce dangers to pedestrians. So I'll keep uh, updating on that as well. There are some changes to bus routes in the Liliha area. Starting June 2nd, Route 2 has, modified, has a modified timetable. Route 13 has a modified timetable and Route 151 uh, which is a loop that goes from Chinatown to Kukini will be changing its timetable to add additional service and run on a half hour basis throughout the day. And so mo for more information on that, uh, visit the bus.org. Um, council member has a bunch of ongoing legislation status. And if you review his monthly newsletter, you will see more information on that. And lastly, um, Tomorrow at 530 at Kapalama um, Elementary School, we will be having a community meeting on coconut rhinoceros beetle and the issues that we're having with it attacking our uh, several of our, our clients. So uh, 530 doors open, presentation starts at six, six o'clock. And that's all that I have for today. Okay, any questions from the board? Board? Question. Yes, Henry. Um, Lisa, how can the board member Donald help in regards to getting more signatures and approvals for the sidewalk? Um, if you would like to, feel free to email me. Uh, that's lisaann.leonardo at honolulu.gov. Or feel free to give me a call at 808. 768-5006, and I can update you with more information. Yes, go ahead. Hi, Lisa. 
Sister Hello. new board member. Um, <laughs> Congratulations. How many, how, thank you. How many signatures are required for this to move forward? There's not necessarily a requirement, but the fact that we have 60, he'd like to see at least 100. It just shows in that area, the neighbors that are speaking up. It just gives him, you know, more um, backup. Donald? Yes, um, you know, that uh, petition and all that. Why don't the councilman have a so called a, me a community meeting and you can bring it up and the people at the meeting can sign the sign the petition. That's rather a very than good. try to go house to house and try to find out who wants it and who doesn't want it. That's a good suggestion. I'll take that back to him. Thank you. Thank you. Good suggestion. Don. Any other comments, questions from the board? Okay, thank you very much. Moving right along. Um, Senator Rhodes. Um, hey, Chair Fong, members of the board, it's Glenn Young from Senator Rhodes' office. Um, can you folks hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I submitted the report, um, and I, I would imagine you folks had a chance to take a look at it. So, I'm not really going to get into it. So, um, it's just the usual things about feral chickens. If you have any complaints, um, any hot spots, let us know, and we can try and get them uh, <clears throat> get that taken care of. Um, the regular COVID report and um, a letter that uh, Senator Rhodes sent to Congress uh, um, in support of establishing a national museum of Asian Pacific American history and culture. Um, that's about it. Um, do folks have any questions? Uh, no, there's really no update on the eradication of the feral chickens and parrots, right? It's still ongoing, right? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just, I mean, still they're ongoing. still there. I mean, uh, <laughs> unless you're going to Eureka. Yeah, no, no. I mean, it's, it, it's something that if, if you guys, um, have any hot spots that you know of that, that are, are just really, uh, problematic just just email the senator and then we can send someone out to to try and take care of it is he gonna come to my resident and catch the chicken for me well you know the senator actually tried to catch a bird before and i'm not i, I don't think he got too good results on that <laughs> okay anyway the reason i brought this up is i've been informed for the the, the uh, information of the board i've been informed and advised by the uh, uh neighborhood commission that there are a couple of items here on the agenda that have been here forever. And they said, unless you take some action, uh, take it off the agenda. And this is one of them. And it's an ongoing problem, the eradication of, of uh, uh, the uh, parrots and the uh, feral chickens. So unless there are any objections, I'm going to take it off the agenda and just let uh, Senator Rhodes and uh, Representative Tak Takanucci just kind of update us if anything is New because they're still there, you know. I, I don't care how long we keep it on the agenda; they're still there. Any objections to that? Okay. Any questions for Senator Rhodes? Yes, Donald. Um, you know, we asked the uh, senators to help um, so-called um, fix this Lili Okalani homeless situation that's under the bridge. Um, right now, the, the representative has the task. Right now, I want the senator to also go in and help get this thing resolved because this thing has been going on for so long that, I mean, where does this thing end? Because the residents in that area are very, very frustrated about the, the homeless under that bridge. So can we get this thing resolved? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely look into it. Um, who else is working on that? Is that the rep, Rep Takanochi or? Yes, uh, our uh, representative. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll touch base with uh, um, Jenna and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do to, to try and um, take care of the situation. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? More? Okay. If not, thanks a lot. Moving okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Moving right along, Senator Makato Kim. Senator Hi. Kim. This is Ori from Senator Kim's office. I'll be here representing the senator today. Um, we are in the middle of another event, um, so I'm going to keep it short. Our community report will be digitally sent to Chair Fong, and if any community members would like it sent to their email, they can send um, their email to our office's email address, sendkim.com. I mean, sendkim at capital.hawaii.gov. And I can take any questions or concerns back now to the senator. Yeah. Any uh, concerns, any questions, any comments for the senator from the board? How about from the public? If not, no. Say hello to the senator for us. Okay, moving right along. Uh, Representative Takinuchi. One second. You know, there's a right turn. Yeah, so I got an unofficial response on that, but I'd like to talk to them again because the response was it's working. But with uh, Gulick Avenue, keep it, you know, keep it on the board. All right, I, I'll keep it on the agenda. Yeah, when we get there, I'll talk. Okay, good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I actually did have some updates about rosemary parakeets and feral chickens from the state. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it, it's funding. We, we did manage to get um, funding in the state budget for both those issues. Um, rosemary parakeets, um, if you saw on the news, the legislature passed like an omnibus, like a big biosecurity bill. So rosemary parakeets was one of the projects that got rolled into the funding for that that got included in the budget. Um, again, though, um, like we we're talking about, it is funding that's likely going to start on Kauai. Uh, where the, the big population boom happened for rosemary parakeets. And then as they figure out like the good methods to do population control for that, then they're going to roll it out to the other islands. Feral chickens also got um, a bunch of funding and um, a program. Actually, thanks to Senator Kim. I know they're at the event, but I want to give her a shout out. One of the bills that passed was her bill. Um, so there are two things that are happening for feral chickens. The state is giving $50,000 to every county that is, needs a match from the county to access the money, but that's funding for doing the same kind of hit the chicken traps or whatever else they want to do to get rid of the populations that exist. And then a second bill also just tasks the Department of Agriculture to work with the counties on doing an education program for people, you know, like don't feed them. If you see them in the park, like don't do that kind of thing to help with population control and then to kind of task Department of Agriculture to lend expertise to the counties for the issue in general um, statewide. Um, yeah, Lilio Kalani Botanical Garden, um, still we did not get an update again on status of the next sweep. Um, my office, Representative Daniel Holt's office and Council Member Dos Santos Tam's office though, did have a meeting together about it. Um, some of the things that came from the meeting that um, Richmond from um, council members office said that they were going to look into as potential things in the garden to maybe help was looking into additional lighting um, to kind of maybe deter people from camping out there um, and to see if there is any kind of more um, security features like gates. Like, I, I know it's nice that it's like open, but we were just tossing around ideas and they said they would follow up with um, parks and recreation about whether some of those things might be feasible to kind of just deter people from coming into the space at this point. Um, but I'll keep it, I mean, or I can keep it on the list and I, I know it's ongoing, the camp's gonna kind of come through. We're still doing outreach about with, with the homeless service providers to try and get people out there, they'll move them along and DOT continues to go out and do the sweep under the bridge itself or their area that they can access. Um, and then, Okay, our everyone's favorite bill, SB 3202, Henry. Um, so the bill did pass. It does look a little different than it did in previous versions. So there is still the language that the counties. So I think, I guess the takeaway from this is right now, we're at the point where the state bill just says the counties are authorized to do this and need to do this. So, you know, this is not going to happen tomorrow. We did write in some time for the counties to start. Um, creating the ordinances that are going to oversee what happens and how this rolls out in actual practice. Um, 
So that's kind of good. But right now the bill allows two options. Either, um, you know how they said, uh, yeah, you have to at least allow at least two ADUs per, or per lot with the main dwelling unit. That's still in there. There is a second option that is a little more complicated. I believe the intention was to address Oahu's concerns, but I'm not quite sure it does. So the second option that's available is the counties can create special districts where these ADUs would be built, but there's a lot of provisions with the second of this special district thing. One is that, you know, they have to focus well, there's, they're supposed to be spread out throughout the island, but also there's language that say that it does have to focus also in the urban core plan. If you guys have seen it, um, it kind of ranges from Hawaii Kai to maybe Pearl City, and they need to create um, specific units available in a special district centered around the urban core plan. That's a reasonable walking distance. I asked what that was. They told me 15 minutes. So 15 minutes to both rail stations and federal highways. Um, I think for us, I was really concerned because 15 minutes from Pali Highway is a lot of our residential areas. Yeah. So, um, and then if they do these special districts, they have to build, they, they wrote some formula in, somebody told me it's about 11,000 parcels that would have to be able to take um, the dwelling unit plus up to two, plus the two ADUs on Oahu. Oahu also has to do an additional build out of apartment and mixed use districts for another 11,000 units if they do that route. Um, so I'm not sure what the feasibility is of that. Um, there's a two year, two year, what's 20? They have until the end of 2026 to adopt one of these options. Otherwise, it's written in there that they can't deny permits based on it just being an ADU alone. But so it basically we that's the law we passed to tell the counties to do this. And now the city council on all the islands, city councils on all the islands are gonna take up work to create the ordinances to see what the, the details of what these programs are gonna look like. Um so hopefully, you know, we can work with um council members of Santos Tam and our other council members who I know some of them had the similar concerns as um the, the board and our residents had about what kind of program this would look like. Um, and then I just had a quick update about some of the bills I introduced that got actually got through and got funded for some of the things. Um, I introduced a bill to help um, to create um, additional funding for youth mental health service programs. This is going to be in our middle and high schools. Um, it's $900,000 um, to get a service provider in there to teach um, it's more kind of coping mechanisms and skills to see like stress level or, you know, if they're having um, issues with their friends or family to kind of teach them um, skills. And then otherwise, if they're kind of needing additional help to contact the school to get them the help, but um, to just keep them th those lower level mental health services. Um, I also helped pass a bill to create a digital equity grant program. We're getting a bunch of federal funding, hopefully pretty soon for digital equity. So digital equity is the part, it's not the, so broadband, right? When we have internet, we have like the actual wire lines and stuff. Digital equity focuses more on making sure people have devices or can pay for the access to internet services or teaching people how to use their devices for everyday things. So really happy to work with the um, DBET on that. They're gonna use this program as the pass through for the federal funds. Um, I also worked on a school harm registry bill. Um, this is gonna help um, uh, right now, DOE and the private schools don't have a good way to check teachers coming between the systems. So this would say, um, or unless they're actually convicted of a crime, but there are a lot of teachers they're finding might be accused of something and then leave the school before the investigation can be completed. This would allow the private schools and the public schools to put these names on a registry um, and then um, to check hires before they do them. There's also an appeals process since um, it is just a registry. There's an appeals process if you end up on this that you can go through to get yourself off um, in those kind of situations. And also we got another, I helped get another $1.5 million for the Hawaii Kiki School Nurse Program. 
These are sending um, our school of nursing people and other um, professional narcissists to go to certain sites around the schools. Um, in addition to like the health aid and everything you have, but they're doing like screenings. They have like telehealth services. They kind of help keep the kids in school. They do additional um, services if maybe they can't get to their pediatrician um, quickly. So, really fun program. I was happy to support. Um, those are my updates. If there's any questions about. 3202 or anything else I can take back. Before you start asking questions, let me do this. two items that I'd like to uh, I'd like to have you, you know, resolve first of all. You know, I said before the neighborhood board <clears throat> commission has said that we got to get rid of some of these items on our agenda. And as as uh, Don said, this Lily Olakalani Gardens has been there you know, uh, after you got off the board and then when you got back on the board, right? <laughs> So, you know, I'm going to propose, and I know you're working on it, and it's an unending um, problem. I propose, I'm going to propose a motion. Yeah, I mean, if you can adjust it any way you want. And I, the motion, I'll read the motion to you and see if you, you, you agree with it. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to direct our state representative, Jenna Takanucci, in coordination with the Senator Rhodes and Representative Holt and the uh, city council member. Tyler DeSantos Tam to remove the homeless from under the School Street Bridge and Louis Okalani Park and give neighborhood board 14 status reports. I move to can can move I move by Carol? Is there a second? Sorry, can I add something to that? Sure. Can we also add Kuakini Street? No. <laughs> no, one at a time. <laughs> Okay, is there a second? Second, it, second of idea. Any discussion? Rather than leave it on the agenda, just keep us giving us a brief. I've been down there a couple of times. It's nobody's there. Nobody's in the park. All the homeless are under the bridge, hanging their laundry on the railing. I know that. But, you know, and no, it's not even being used. But anyway, I think hopefully that will just take it off the agenda. Keep us posted and cross our fingers. Henry. Um, why don't we do it like well, the situation is? It gets cleared up, goes off our calendar or um, our agenda, and then when it comes that back again, we add it on again. Okay. But I'd like to take this motion just so we can take some action. And if it comes back up, let's put it back on. Okay. Is it okay? Any other discussion? Okay. If not, uh, can I just get a raise of show of hands? Is that okay? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed, your left hand. <laughs> but no objections, most of carried. Okay, the, the reason why I pointed you is well, you're going to be the point man. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, the point person. <laughs> so you coordinate with all the rest of them. Yeah, no, no. I, will, I will be very excited and I will definitely. I know, and you've been, you've been doing a good job. Yeah, I, I know. Call. And I mean, you know, I, I used to remember I've been on the board so long in the state, which it's their problem. And the city says, no, it's not my it's your problem. So you coordinate with them. And you want our support, let us know. I may tell them it's very important to this board, and that's why I bug them every month about it. I know. Thank you. Yeah. The other suggestion, anyway, is there's technology out there that we can send an electronic noise that would make them nauseous or maybe put up. Water cannon on one side, and whoever yeah. wants to get off some frustration, cut the water cannon loose. You know what I mean? It it's like it, it'll be a win-win for all, right? That that's not. I know I think uh, state sanction. Anything that, that's, like that. that is not coming from our neighborhood board. I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> Uh, other than that, now I know you want to talk about three, two, zero, two. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just wanted some clarification on the two options for three, two, zero, for SB three, two, zero, two. Um, because the, to my understanding, it seems like one of the options is for ADUs to be built, but they must focus on the urban core plan, um, something like 11,000 units. So long as they're nearby a or 50 minutes near a rail station and or freeways. It's see, I, I read this part of the bill a little unclearly about what the special district is supposed to be. Um, if you take a look at the bill, so it does it has two points about the special districts. 
The first is that, you know, the counties just have to designate them and they should be, you know, evenly distributed as much as possible across the island. However, the second point also just kind of, it, it just says that a district also has to be created specifically based on the urban core in the urban core, um, citing that plan and citing that has to be walking like in the areas within walking distance of rail stations and highways and freeways. I'm unclear what the overlap is for that, or if there are two districts. I, I, I get, I think the intention is supposed to be one, but it kind of concerns me because then that means a lot more might have to be within the urban core. So uh, that was a little unclear to me. I think we might be leaving it up to the counties to interpret um, how they're going to do it if they go with the the vessel district option. And I, I was kind of concerned because it's eleven thousand. When I asked what it meant, it's not like 11,000 ADUs total. It's like 11,000 lots that can have up to the two ADUs that we need to designate if we use the special districts minimum. Yeah, the plan has to account, whatever plan they make has to account for up to 11,000 homes being able to build two more ADUs. So, so is that like the uh, minimum or is that like it, the max? It's, it's a minimum. The min oh. and, and also, in addition, Oahu only has to build 11,000 like apartment mixed use units as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, you know, first of all, I know some of us individually uh, provided testimony in objection to 32020 uh, will then go very far. So we now have this law, okay? I mean, the bill, it's, it's, so it's up to the counties, I believe, to take some action. So with that in mind, what do you, uh, Board members think about, you know, you got to remember now, how dense is our district? Just think about if you drive down Kalia, Kalia, Kalia Street, the one with all the the uh, papaya trees on the next street, is no, Anyway, think of. Think about all our monster homes and and the density of you know the new Kamehameha Heights. I mean heavens. So what is your pleasure, board members? I mean, it's really up to our council to do something, right? Yes, I imagine it says. I believe the bill says adopt ordinances. So I think they're going to have to actually pass something through council. Um, I don't think it's just going to be, you know, DPP or the planning department updating their process, or I, I imagine the council would want to pass something at this point because of all the concerns that are being raised. Uh, I, I can't, I can double check on that though. Comments? This 11,000, are they able to retrofit or uh, retro the illegal units also? I am not sure. I think a lot of it is going to come in the details of what how the city sets up the program I, I i know what you're saying right like because like some of the units might be considered attached adus or something i i know that was a big concern um i'm not clear i i, I know other people share that concern as well though i can try and get additional clarification um, but again it's not going to happen immediately um, because we do have this process where they need to probably adopt an ordinance but um, I'll, I'll try and get more clarification from yeah. People smarter than me about oh, okay. what that is. And in Bill 7, which I presented the concept about a couple, five years ago, anyway, that brings up, uh, what is it? Uh, one of the units was all the way up to almost Kokini Street. That's a 15-minute walk from down to the rail station down by Costco area. Okay. So that changes the density dramatically from so it comes from Kapolei all the way through I guess downtown yeah. so that density change impacts a lot of people and makes this urban core as they call it anyway really difficult the lifestyle and the environment changes dramatically how can we push it up to Hawaii Kai too and Royal Summit um, I believe that, well, so the urban core plan actually does go from Hawaii Kai all the way to Pearl City. I, I'm not really sure. This this thing about the special districts and the urban core um, uh, 
transit stuff that got added in at the last minute. I, I'm not really clear about what the intention is. It, it happened in, in our conference committee um, time. I, I know people were kind of confused about what it was, and a lot of us had questions about the wording. Like, like I'm not sure if it's one special district or two special districts. Um, I, I feel like it's a little unclear. Um, but. Yeah. Sorry, was I, I hear you though. No, I, last, I, I was actually last very minute, concerned to see. Bill change last dump yeah. in there. I, I mean, I think the intention was to try and address some of the Oahu concerns, but I am not, I, I don't know what it's going to actually be. Okay. Any more questions or for information's sake? Then I'm going to ask you, what do you want to do? Do, do you want, and also maybe what do you want to do in regards to addressing this issue? And having our council member, because he's the only link that can do something with the city council, right? In regards to 3202. I think we need some clarifications of what they're actually trying to do. I mean, it, it's very open ended. It doesn't seem like it's focused on any. Yeah, typically the state laws are kind of broader like this, and then we we kick it to the counties to work out the actual details. Um, so I, I'm not sure what the council is going to do, but um, I, I know there are many council members who shared a lot of these concerns. I know um, Council Chair Waters was emailing us, and so I, I imagine they are going to try to write out a program to address um, some of these. That are they going to keep us informed while we're doing this, or are we can? Be after it's all done, we get noticed. Um, so it should be the same thing of the public process again. So though someone, you know, some one of the council members will introduce the bill, it'll have to go through committees where the public can submit testimony either in person or written. And then, you know, if it passes the full council, it would go to the mayor. Um, that, that's why I'm saying it's you know it's not going to be an immediate change. Um, so th there is some time that hopefully that we can work on some of these issues that I know um, people in our area are concerned about. Yes, well. Hi, hey, Jenna. So, <clears throat> with ADUs, I, I guess I have to get a clarification because normally ADUs is a separate additional dwelling unit. These monster homes are one big home, three, four levels high. We see it all over on level heights. With the ADUs, if you have, and I had to make sure of my numbers, if you have lots at least 3,500 square feet, which most of them do, per se, in our area, they can only have one ADU of up to 400 square feet. So how are these monster homes getting away with having 17 rooms and not even adequate uh, bathrooms in the kitchen? The reason why I say that is because my son used to live in one. So he told me how they all have to share bathroom, and then that news article where that young lady tried to get 17 bathrooms in her monster home was shut down. So what is the difference that the city and county or state level on your end are looking at? Like, how can we figure out a way to stop these from happening? Because it is hurting the parking. Yeah. So my understanding is the monster homes aren't being built with this ADU clause. Um, that's what Henry was asking if maybe now they're going to start saying, because you can have attached or detached ADUs. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I, I think that's why a lot of us were really concerned with this additional um, ADUs being kind of forced upon the counties, right? Because now, yeah, we're limited to one per three, three, five hundred square foot lot, which I think, you know, people who are building Ohana units for a family or some, or a small uh, one renter are using, um, this would allow them to do two per lot. Um, they, they do still have to um, follow all of this, the current um, setbacks or, you know, space requirements that the counties already have. So that might help a little, um, or, you know, if the county's anticipating having to do more of this, want to change some of those laws to limit the ADU um, building, they could do that too. I, I, I can't speak for what they're going to try and do in the bill for the program, um, given that I, I do think there are some areas, right, in the bigger lots where this would work probably really well for people, but I, I think we're just going to have to see what kind of bill the county comes up with for the program at this point. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. What is your pleasure board? I mean, uh, I think the person and I'm seeing it again, the person we should direct our attention is to our city council member, right? Because he's the one, the link to our city council who can do something about this, uh, this bill. Is that correct? 
Is that right, Jenna? Yeah, eventually it will be a bill. Um, I don't think anything's moving just yet. Yeah, right. but if we want oh, to get... Actually, the governor hasn't signed hasn't yet. Hasn't signed, yes. Be, yeah. Be, everyone contact the governor and ask him well, to veto. I'm just kidding. Yes, <laughs> be, 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 be military. I want to be prepared, ready to go, and not until they say, oh, by the way, how come I got... Actually, they got two more government. buildings on that lot across from me. Oh, my God. Anyway, what's your pleasure? Sure, I think you might... It might be a little far out for the board to take action if you'd like to wait till the city council starts doing work. Well, I think but what I like to do is, you know, uh, uh, how would you say, share the the concerns of our board with our city council member. How's that? There you go. How's about the governor? Is that a good way? Well, it's very diplomatic. to sign it. Yeah, I, I, I think we need to put together something so we can share our concerns with with the city council so they know that we have a issue with them. We're not just, we don't want to know about it after, after it's done. We want to know about it before. Yeah. I would love to leave that. Do a motion. Do we want to suggest a motion that we direct our city, um, city council, our city council member, uh, Tyler De Santos to go ahead, try it. Uh, we we should probably wait to see if the governor vetoes it or signs it, which is what? How many days from now? July. Well, how about putting it this way, unless the governor vetoes it. <laughs> see, so what do you want city council member to do, unless the governor vetoes it? If the governor vetoes it, you know, we're back to square one. But I don't want to wait another month. So. Go ahead. Yeah, we need something to, to get them to direct the, the attention to this. So we, we're in a problem with it along with everyone else. So we, we don't know after it's all completed. But they're gonna, it's not a proposal. Let, me, let me make a suggestion. If you could. Um, I'll entertain a motion that we uh, direct our, uh, our council member, uh, Tyler DeSantis Tam to uh, See, uh, keep us informed uh, as to what the city council plans to do in in regards to this new bill. That bill or law? Law? Uh, not law. No, this this new law, unless it is vetoed by the governor. Okay. Because if it's vetoed by the governor, yeah, heck with it. But at least it, he's on notice now. Get going. Is, is that okay? Is that good? That sounds good. Sounds good? I second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't make that motion because I'm the chair. You want to make the motion? Okay. Did you get that? Let's get it, Don. Okay. Okay, is there a second? Seconded by uh, Don. Any discussion? Okay, basically, I'm saying that we direct our um, city council member, um, Tam, to keep, us to keep us informed as what the city council is doing in regards to um, the this this law, unless it's it's unless it's vetoed by the governor. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Any more discussion? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed? That? All right. Well, okay. Let's another vote. Another vote. All those in favor of this this motion, raise your right hand. All those opposed. Those who abstain. <laughs> okay. Uh, the ayes have it, and the motion is what's what's the count? Uh, Spencer, what was the count? Okay, they abstain. That's re okay. Okay. Thank you. Motions carry. Thank you very much. Any other questions, General? I mean, Representative. Anything? I thought. Thank you very much. Got that. I did have one comment on the chicken situation. I attended an event over at McKinley High School. Uh -huh. and there must be a hundred chickens. Oh, they died. 
They're everywhere. McKinley High School is at the, the uh, Wind Ensemble. They had a, uh, mm. uh, an event over there just the other day. It was chickens and everything. Okay. You want, want to show chickens with them? I'll, I'll drop a note to DOE on, on the state properties. The departments have a little bit more um, yeah. ability to. Yeah, <laughs> but hopefully I'll, I'll mention that I got a comment about it. Yeah. Thank you. As long as it's not on his school menu. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much. Representative Nucci. next. Uh, Senator, I'm sorry, representative. Oh. Um, governor's representative. Representative from, uh, uh, Ed Case's office from a set of Ed Case. Did I miss somebody? Who did I miss? Yeah. Oh, I'm check this. I'm sorry. Is there, is there a representative from. District 29, um, May, Mizuno, Mizuno, Mizuno. Any representative? Sorry about that. Yes, sir. You recovered everybody. All right, uh, moving right along. Uh, minutes from uh, April 8th, 2024. Any corrections? Not a, a, entertain a motion to approve. Move. Moved by the down. Second, second of my chance. Discussion. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed. Motion carried. No objections. All right. I believe we covered all the old business. Okay. New business. Last thing on the agenda. <clears throat> Somebody's asked, uh, "Are we or do we want a Canada forum for our, our neighborhood board?" I'm up for discussion. Is that for the primary or for the general? Or for both? I don't care. What? <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm primary. putting it on the agenda with somebody. <laughs> the primary is generally more important. Your thoughts? Oh, wait, first of all, have we ever had a forum? Yeah, I think we did. Well, anyway, your thoughts, people? Primary? First of all, yes. Uh, next question, yes. But primary general. Your thoughts. We got to prepare. The question is how. Oh, chair phone. I think it would depend on how we're going to set up the form, if it's going to be where we did, how in, how we did in 2022, where we had the candidates um, give a short spiel versus if we have them, if we have a Q&A session with them, because if we do have a Q&A session where it is a lengthier form, then perhaps the primary may be the best time to have it versus if there is going to be a shorter forum where we just have them give a three minute spiel, then Possibly the job as well. Other comments? Is this for the primary or the general? Um, mainly speaking for the primary. Uh, 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 if not, I would say uh, I, I I would be for having a forum for the primary. Although we do have quite a few contested. When you say pieces. forum and you're saying eliminate the Q and A and just give them one minute or whatever, just to have a platform. Is that what you're saying? Well, for me, I would want to include the Q and A, although that's up to the discretion of the board. That's correct. And thoughts? Go ahead, Carl. I think the Q and A is pretty important, you know, because otherwise you can, you can see the campaign literature, you can. You know, get the blurbs, whatever, but the Q and A's. So, in other words, okay, well, but I guess the 1st question is, do you want 1? And I'm all entertain a motion anybody. If they want 1.
I I want one. Could you make a motion? Okay. How about we make a motion to have a um, primary ca candidate forum and Q and A? Okay. That's the first question. That's motion. Is there a second? Second by chance. Discussion. Okay. All in favor of having a uh, candidate's primary a primary um, candidate's forum with a Q&A, uh, raise your right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nine, is that correct? Nine, all right. You can vote if you want. I have to abstain I because I'm a candidate. I know, I know. So I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll be abstaining. Know. Okay, thank you. I was just about to say you can still vote, but you can abstain too. All right, and, any opposed? Okay, motion to carry. Now, what's the format? How long, et cetera, et cetera? And it's going to be during our, one of our meetings. It's going to be long. So what I like to do is I like to have a volunteer to set up a forum uh, or a format for our candidates. And how do we send out the notice? Spencer, to those who are going to be running for office in the prime. When's the primary, by the way? August 10th. So we send out a send out a invitation by what? June. Oh my gosh, that's short fuse, huh? July then. Are you going to send out the invitation? I need somebody to, to take care of this. Um, so I'm not going to be here. Who would I like to volunteer? Who? Sure, I'll volunteer. Okay, thank you, Carol. I'll just set up the format. Is there any objections? Carol's going to set up the format. And we can send out the... How do we get the, a list of those who have filed? That's after June, is that right? June did what's the file? What's the deadline to file? June fourth. Okay, so by June fourth we have a we we'll have the uh, list and and can we get we can get the addresses or emails for all of these? It's all in there. Okay, I'll leave it up to Carol. Can can somebody help Carol too? If you need help. Thank you, Chance. All right, very good. Uh, so we'll start with the primary, and uh, we'll probably have the forum in, let's see if it's June, July, July, okay, during the July meeting. Primary. I'll set up the, I'll set up the agenda. And you can do it. Any questions, objections? All right. Wow. Thank you very much. All right. Let's see. Uh, Molly Hill. St. Francis. Kila. Okay. Uh, so, Alana Kila Senior, uh, Multi Purpose Senior Center wants to thank everybody. They did get their grant in aid for operations for this coming year. And so thank you everybody who was a support for them. We had our volunteer appreciation uh, with, I think it was almost 250 people there for all the volunteers who helped. It was very, very well attended. And we had, um, it was lots of fun and lots of food. And then uh, just FYI, things coming up besides just their regular classes. Um, June 14th, there will be a food handlers class. July 17th, there will be a how to prepare as homeowners for natural disasters class. And then in uh, also in July, July 10th will be their um, candidate fair. So those are the upcoming things besides their 85 classes every month. Any questions? Go ahead. Um, for the classes you'd mentioned, 
does it have to be just for folks who are 65 and over or can other people attend to us? Those are really interesting. The classes I mentioned are for everybody and you can become a member at Lana Kila at age 60. Yes, so, uh, but the classes are open. They're, they're um, open to the public. Yeah. And they're also some of them like the um, how to prepare for natural disasters are going to be zoom also. So. Any questions uh, just for your information. Um, I took the liberty of actually, I made a personal donation to Lana Kila. Uh, and not Lana Kila. <laughs> yeah, you're like Lana Kila. That's right. I'm thinking about what am I thinking? Lana Kila. But anyway, Lana Kila. Uh, and uh, I actually, I congratulated them and I did it on behalf of our, our neighborhood board for all the work that they did it's on my dime. So I just to let you know they've done a lot in our community. Yeah. To me, you know, they service something like 2,000 senior citizens. And what I like about and when I was a Catholic charity, this for your information, that was one of my favorite charities uh, that's been uh, run by Catholic charities because it, it keeps our seniors healthy and, you know, uh, cognizant, I should say, and keeps them out of my, the home that I was president of, Palolo Chinese Home, which is long term care. And that is expensive. So, I really appreciate it, Lana Kila, and I think all of us do, the neighborhood board. So, so I hope you don't mind my congratulating them on behalf of the board. My dime, as they say. Any questions? All right, next, uh, let's see. Uh, Friends of the Liha Library. Friends of the report, Chair. Okay, how's fatherhood? Busy, <laughs> but good. Those of you who don't know, he had twins, double duty. All right, let's see now. Um, <clears throat> other nonprofits? No. All right, announcements. The next the board meeting is not on May 13th, it's <laughs> June 10th. A little typo there. Yes, I think we were going to recess, yeah, July. Didn't we vote on that? I don't know. Did we? I don't remember. Can you double check? But anyway, the next meeting is in June 10th, and uh, I will be off island, and uh, Chance will be the chair. Okay. Let's double check. Did we? So in July, on July 10th, voted to recess in December 2023 and June 2024. Right. We will not have a meeting on in June 10th. Forget that. What well, next meeting will be on July? What's the next meeting? July what? July, okay, so, but we can still have the, the candidate forum. Yeah, so we can still have it in July. Okay, this can be posted, uh, Carol and Chance, and uh, put it in the agenda, whatever is needed. Okay, everybody understand that? With no, no meeting in June. So, uh, I mean, everybody's not gonna be here anyway. But anyway, so uh, have a great uh, month. I have one announcement. Actually, I received this from Ernest Cavallo. Um, he's a member of the neighborhood board 13, but he writes it as an individual. And he gave this to me or emailed this to me. And he said he would like to invite all of us uh, all. And he is in, in his invitation is in an, his individual capacity, not as a board member to uh, join him in another community walk on Saturday. June 22nd, Saturday, June 22nd at 9 a.m. It will start at the old Hitco 
building on Richardson King at the new oh, to be open Hawaii Inspiration Museum. And he says, in combination with Council Member Tyler DeSantos. So if you'd like to go down, see what they're doing in that uh, neighborhood board area. Uh, again, it's going to be June 22nd, 9 a.m. This is what's, an announcement. What's the purpose? I'm sorry. Just to walk around Chinatown. That's, he's done it before. So, but, but he asked me to make an announcement. I said, sure. And, as he, and again, he's, he's doing this in his individual capacity, not, not as a board member. Okay, yes, yeah, Saturday. Maybe I'll treat you to dim sum. <laughs> All right, any other business? Announcements? Golly, I'm not going to see you guys until July then, right? Oh, all right. With that, let's see. It is now 8 17. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Don't everybody move to adjourn. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Second. For, for a guy who abstained. I know you want to vote. <laughs> second, second. Second. The two guys who abstained. <laughs> okay. All in favor of adjourning, raise your right hand. All right. Have a great evening. Thank you.